Hi, this is Rev Ed with today's Back Porch Devotional from Genesis 41, verses 53 through 57. The seven years of plenty that occurred in the land of Egypt came to an end, and the seven years of famine began to come. As Joseph had said, there was famine in all lands, but in the land of Egypt there was bread. When all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. And Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph, what he says to you, do. So when the famine had spread over all the land, Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians, for the famine was severe in the land of Egypt. Moreover, all the earth came to Egypt to Joseph to buy grain, because the famine was severe over all the earth. So we see that Joseph's wise preparations are paying off. And the people of Israel of Egypt are preserved, as well as other nations, including ultimately Joseph's own family, who, as we know, will travel to Egypt to buy grain. Joseph has been put in this remarkable position, and he is using his power to be a blessing to others. And while we may not be put in that kind of position of authority in our lives, and may not be able to influence a whole lot of people, Every last one of us is in a position to do something good for others just in the way we routinely go about our business. It is one of the basic principles of uh, biblical economics that we are not to hoard everything for ourselves, but we are to make provision for others. In the 19th chapter of Leviticus, beginning at the ninth verse, uh, the Lord says this to us, when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap your field right up to its edge, neither shall you gather the gleanings after your harvest. And you shall not strip your vineyard bare, neither shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and for the sojourner. I am the Lord your God. In other words, we're not to try and squeeze every single dime out of our living for ourselves, but are to make sure that there is something left over for the poor and for the sojourner, for the travelers, for the aliens, for those that don't belong. We are to make provision for this in the way we go about our daily business. We are to serve others with what has been entrusted to us. We have to have this as a basic operating principle for our lives. It's one of the oldest concepts in scripture. We are blessed in order to be a blessing. Paul emphasizes the same thing in the second chapter of Philippians, where he says, Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility. Count others as more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. And then Paul points us to the example of Jesus. He says, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. If this is the way our Savior has given himself for us, then this is the way we are to give ourselves for others. It is all right to look out for your own interest, but it is not all right to stop there. We have to think ahead of time. We have to make provision for those moments that are going to come when we have an opportunity to be a blessing to others. You know, you hear about people who are prepping for some kind of disaster and doomsday that might come and they're storing up stuff in their basement for their families. And there's nothing wrong with preparing for disaster if you see it coming. But when you're preparing for that disaster, make sure you're preparing enough to serve your neighbors. Make sure that you are making provision for others besides just your own immediate circle. We are not here just for ourselves. We are here for the sake of others. And God has put every single one of us in a particular place to be a blessing to those who are around us. Now God placed Joseph in an amazing spot as the number two man in Egypt. He was able to have a beneficial impact on tens of thousands of people because of his wisdom and because Pharaoh trusted him and because he had been given all that power. And we think to ourselves, well, I just can't make that much of a difference in my world. 
well, you not be, may not be put in the position of prime minister of Egypt, but you are given a sphere of influence right where you are. And God has already equipped you with the gifts and talents that you need and with the Holy Spirit and his wisdom to figure out how you can be a blessing to those immediately around you, to those whom you encounter in your daily walk, whether you're at work or in school or in your retired life, whatever it is, there are moments of influence that you can have and you're to be a blessing to others. And we have to think ahead of time as Joseph did to be prepared for the hard days that will certainly come. We know hard days come, so we're fools if we don't prepare for it. But we should prepare not just for ourselves, but for others. And in this way, we model the love of Christ who gave himself completely for others, for you and for me. God's blessings be upon you this day.